Um, uh, and you know, I just got the notification about recording. Yes, I I forgot to start it uh, three or four minutes ago, and and just realized now that it wasn't running. Go ahead. Sorry for the interruption. So um, I have a, a particular plugin to display um, uh, posts uh, of a custom post type, uh, and the post query is fairly complex. Uh, I have reached out to the developer, they say, uh, as I said, uh, they don't understand why it doesn't work. I have tried to hire uh, a couple of local uh, uh, PHP programmers. Uh, they're not interested in a little small thing that uh, I've got. So uh, if nobody here can help me, if uh, uh, I'm quite prepared to if you can find somebody for me to work with me to get this one little thing done. Sure. Uh, What's the name of the plugin? It's uh, from Unlimited Elements. Unlimited, Unlimited Elements. Elements. And, yeah, and it's a it's about 30, 40, 50 plugins all in one. Widgets uh, do various things. <clears throat> These are for Elementor. Yes. Right. Um, so we have a plugin on top of a plugin, so to speak. Yep. And and in this particular case, this is one of those uh, sort of suite of functions that are all in the same plugin. And uh, in other words, you don't you don't have multiple plugins to install depending on what features you want to use. It's one plugin for all of them. That's correct. Yeah, that's okay. the concept. And which particular component is it that? Uh, uh, is it in the widget library? Uh, yes, it is a. Um, uh, I'm just going to look here. It's a, a post grid um, I'm from unlimited. I'm sorry. I'm just sort of. I'm on the page now of widgets. Post widgets. Yeah. Post grid. Yep. Okay. And. Um, I can show you my screen if that was sure. Why, why don't you do that? Um, and so, what you mentioned something of it, about it being tricky. Um, what is it that you're trying? Which post you're trying to pull for it? Okay, let let me uh, uh, show everybody here. Sure. Um, I think that. What? Share, share screen is that green button in the middle. Yeah, of I know. I'm just looking for the right screen. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Uh, I find that if you put the window that you want to click on the share as the foremost window and then go to the, the zoom, then it will appear kind of in the left corner at the, in the top row of your desktop. Uh, OK. Um, Still don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay, so um, go to the browser tab that you want to right. share. Click that so that it's the last thing you have touched before you go to the Zoom window and the share screen button. Right. And then you should see on your so desktop in the top left corner, that should be the right window. I don't know why it doesn't display an accurate view of your desktop, but that's what I've gotten used to. Uh, okay, I'm going to. <laughs> I mean, if you get the wrong window, it's no big deal. Just stop sharing and share again. Uh, uh, no, it's not working. You share screen here. Oh, there. Okay. So. Uh, this is the screen, right? Um, and these are the uh, uh, parameters for this particular one. And um, so, I just want to show that uh, I'm in the post query developing it, right? And I'm I've picked the post type, um, uh, and then. It's got to have all these various values. 
right. uh, one of these values. And uh, then I want to add a second meta key. So uh, right now uh, it says, is it this particular post type? And does this field, uh, does it have one of, this, one of these values? And I want to be able to add a second meta key. And if I do that, no post found. Um, which, which, well, so the process is to first find, find posts that meet the first criterion, right? The first right. meta value. And then you go to the second meta value to further filter the list, right? That's correct. So what it's saying, I guess, is that there are no, there's nothing coming out of that first meta value. But that's not true, though, because you, you can the, see these, that there the, are things found. Yeah, these are the ones that are found before I try and add the second meta value. And when you add the second one, the, the, they all disappear? Yes, I'll show you again. Um, where is it now? Uh, add set second meta key. No post right. found. And what did the and the developer said that it all looked fine to him as far I mean we're we're setting two values right we're setting the your well you set the the first one the meta field I guess the so the qu first question I have is how is the set of um, meta values constructed so when you did the first meta value how did you create that particular string. Okay, well, I can show you, uh, they have a nice little feature in all of their plugins. This is the coding of the query with, without the second meta value, right? And unfortunately, I can't copy this other than uh, with a, uh, um, a, a screen capture. What does the... Uh, there's a button in the top right corner there that sort of looks like an edit button. No, that just edits the, uh, that's the Elementor edit for uh, this particular um, widget. Right, but that wouldn't, would that not include the query? Uh, well, no, uh, uh, all that does is it says, I can come over here and see this, uh, the parameters to set the Elementor widget up. Hmm. But they're not saved within the widget settings, I take it then, right? No, it, it creates this on the fly. Right. Uh, but I mean, is it, this works like the customizer sort of standard process, which are exactly. settings that go in the database to be stored, right? Right. As opposed to being written out to a file somewhere. Right. And so why, why would you want to copy that? Well, if I could create this uh, and add the second meta key manually, my understanding is that I should be able to uh, have a, a custom query. Um, Well, anyway, I, some way or another, I, I, I need to try and figure out how right. this is working or somebody needs to point me. Right, uh, but in, the, in the, the meta field that's there, what is the meta value? What is the sort of, um, uh, what's the label for the meta values? Are they categories? Are they tags? Uh, Are they values it, that you've added to the custom post type? It, it is a uh, a checkbox field, uh, multi-select checks checkbox field, and I want to be able to test if one of those values is in that field. Right, and so what what sort of values would they be? Just to give me an idea. Um, well, I can actually show you the. Uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm just wondering whether it would be any better if these aren't categories that are being used here whether switching to categories might be something that's, you know, more bulletproof uh, if you're not using it, categories. We're not using categories. Um, 
And, and uh, any, what, any particular reason why categories didn't, wasn't chosen? Well, there's about 10 different fields, uh, uh, custom uh, fields that I've created with ACF uh, in, uh, for this particular post type. So it, if, if I use categories for one, I just don't know how users would be able to input uh, all of this uh, and, and get it straight. It, it would be way too complicated. I suppose you could do it with uh, categories, but. But so the, the things though that you're putting in these fields, what kind of information is it? I mean, categories are a, a generally standard way in order to filter and, and sort um, uh, fields, field values of one kind or another uh, in this sort of situation. I mean, that's why, you know, the sort of one of the three core elements of a custom post type is the taxonomy. And certainly right. with ACF, you can add anything you like, right? But the problem with that, maybe you run into this problem here. Let me show you a- Yeah, sure, sure. show me what you- uh, This is uh, a, uh, a soldier, okay? Right. These are all uh, the custom fields here. Uh, and so for example, uh, the second field uh, meta value I want to have is uh, to select, does it have this particular value present in this field? Right. Um, the it's, other... really, it's, it's, it's partly sort of the interaction of ACF and the plugin on plugin. Um, which is a fairly wicked brew of three fairly complex plugins. Yeah. Um, is it, did the query loop come from Elementor or is that something customized by the uh, Unlimited Elements plugin? The, the latter. Right. And so other than saying it should work, you didn't get any el anything else back, no offer to do what you're proposing to put no. the code itself uh, together no. and run it. I mean, no. with the code that you're talking about, you've essentially got a plugin, right? Um, right. And um, hmm. well, unfortunately, the, the sort of being able to debug the actual plugin code is not something I'm able to do. Um, but what I'm seeing here in, in the fields that you're talking about are for one of a better term, they're, they're categories, right? You're, in other words, you're saying from the, this list of choices, pick one if applicable. And then what you've done is pick the value in a category. Right. Um, the reason I mention that is simply because at least as far as things like core blocks in um, with the block editor and the query loop for posts in that particular case, um, it's designed to work very smoothly with categories. And so there, it might be easier to debug, to debug but, but what we're talking about is taking your uh, set of fields with their, the choice of values and, and turning those into categories. Which, which plugin did you use for the custom post type? Um, ACO, uh, to create them? Yeah. Well, I used uh, CPT. Like I, ACF UI. right now will allow you to do that, but did, uh, did, did uh, you use a separate plugin for that? I, I did, uh, and I've converted to uh, ACF. Converted meaning what? Well, um, uh, the with the new ACF, there is a fe yes, feature. Yes, the new that ACF can... just re recently released uh, enables custom post types to be registered. I'm not sure though, does it have the taxonomy aspect of it as well? Yes, there is. And they call and, them taxonomies? Yes, and for both of them, there is a conversion from CPT UI built into the plugin. Right, no, no I'm aware of that. Um, hmm. What if there's some way to just test, you know, just to convert one um, 
of your fields into a, um, a taxonomy and use the ACF taxonomy for that because you're working with, you're making fewer changes in the basic scheme, right? And you're doing something yeah. which these um, post grid and similar um, blocks are, are specifically designed to do. Um, oh, I know I'm pushing the envelope uh, here. I, there is another approach that I haven't explored yet, uh, which is to just go and find uh, a, uh, a different post widget, uh, even if we have to pay for it, um, that has uh, a more robust uh, um, query customizer, if you will. Right. Well, I'm not sure that though that there's anything that you want to do that the uh, block editor uh, and the the um, the block specifically set up for post using the query loop uh, wouldn't you know be able to handle. I mean, that's sort of the whole point of them is um, to be able to run these queries. Um, so that you could have multiple um, sort of levels to it. So one level is what your first meta value does, then the second level does what the second meta value does. And uh, this notion of the second query being dependent upon the first one is pretty straightforward. There's just a switch there that says, you know, for the query loop, take the context of this query as whatever this particular page or the previous query specifies. And to me, that's what meta value one and meta value two do, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, but that's something that is um, quite ordinary. Let's put it that way, and relatively simple in the sense that setting it up, if you already have um, the requisite sort of data organized, which is to say, either fields or taxonomies or what have you. Um, but I know that they. I know that it's quite straightforward with taxonomies. Um, and there's really nothing much different between a, creating a field with a number of available values and creating a taxonomy uh, or 10 of them for that matter. Um, functionally, I'm not sure if there's any difference. So in any event, what I'm saying is that if you um, stay sort of in the middle of the road with respect to um, the capabilities that a block, for example, like a block editor, a block from the Gutenberg side of the brain, um, doing the queries in that particular situation. Well, let's put it this way. I, I'm not sure if how, I wonder if, how hard it would be for you to simply try one of the, the, the standard blocks, the core blocks, and create just one taxonomy or two taxonomies. And make them simple. Say only three choices in each, yeah. right? And then try that out with your post data, and see what happens. If it works, then develop it from there. And if it doesn't work, okay, well, you haven't expended much in the process. But um, there's cert it's certainly true, though, that if you want support uh, of this kind, then the people who are working on Gutenberg right now are fielding questions and dealing with things and telling us. Hey, you know, if you want, I've got a question or problem, you know, just fire it over to me and I'll uh, be happy to get back to you kind of thing. And because um, um, in a sense, they're learning and experimenting themselves. And so therefore, um, they will sort of tackle problems of this kind quite straightforwardly. Um, are you familiar at all with Gutenberg and the block editor and so on? Not really. No. Okay, because I think you, so you use the um, classic editor for posts and such? Yeah, the classic editor, right? Right. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, to me, that's, it would be relatively easy to convert. Well, as I say, if, if trying a small scale experiment with as simplified a situation as you can, and get that working uh, with the block editor 
then you'll have the confidence that spending more time on it will be productive. Um, the problem with fixing something like this is that from a developer's point of view, um, it's a kind of an open-ended problem, unless the person happens to have done a lot of query loop stuff and therefore, you know, just with the knowledge he's already gotten, he can solve 90% of the problems that arise. But if you're talking, most developers don't have that sort of experience or specialization, I guess, is a, is a way of looking at it. Um, and so to them, it would be, well, what will I have to learn? You know, how complicated is this? I haven't seen this before. And therefore, um, a reluctance to doing that rather than working on a, you know, a project with um, the different sort of approach you take in that regard as to how you're organizing the work. Right. Okay, well, you give, me, you give me some food for thought. Uh, I think we're occupied too much of everybody else's time. Uh, right. But you might just start by going to the um, documentation at wp.org and uh, search for query loop and or the query loop block or whatever, and you'll find that it's fairly readable stuff. Um, okay. It's not sort of heavily laden with technical jargon or anything. Um, and uh, and I've been through a, a, a half a dozen webinars of one sort or another on WordPress.tv that have had work career loop stuff in them. And um, um, actually, why don't I put my email address in, in the chat window. And uh, if you want to give the Gutenberg or block editor um, a whirl, and let me know, then I'll um, I'll find you some references or the resources that I've used for the query loop stuff, um, and that will take you to the you know the videos and webinars and so on that deal with that. They basically just say you know here's exactly how the query loop works. Here's the way. Here are the steps you take to set it up, and then whoever gave that particular presentation is a person you can fire off a question to saying. You know, I watch the webinar, but I don't see how to do this particular thing with the core blocks, meaning I want to, I don't want to use a plugin. I want to use just what we've got. You already got a custom post date. Right. But you might have to set up the categories. That's all. Uh, the taxonomy. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> all right. Sorry we couldn't give you like a final answer that would solve the problem, but. Um, it's a you've got a fairly uh, sophisticated looking um, part of your site there. I mean, when you do get it to work, it'll be pretty cool, right? Yeah, I'm I'm quite thrilled that site has uh, over seven thousand soldiers now who served in the regiment and over six thousand artifacts of one sort and another. Excellent. And I use relationship links. So, for example. Uh, if we have a soldier and we have his medals and we can link uh, to the artifact, uh, the soldier to the artifact and so on. So it's it's way beyond what I thought I was going to Well, also do. you'd be able to link started. a soldier if, you know, if you're collecting where they were, did our tour of duty, then people who may not have known one another might find themselves two points on the same part of the map. Well, we're finding, we're finding now, as a matter of fact, just today, uh, identified a relative of somebody that I know in the database, and I don't think they know that their relative right. served. Right. Interesting. I've noticed that there's a, 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 a feature in some of the more sophisticated forms plugins that enables you to allow users to, in effect, create a post on the front end, meaning just a page that comes up and they can write what they like. And then that becomes the input for a post or added to a post uh, with, you know, whatever editorial control you want before that actually happens. But the just forms can do things we, you never thought of a, as being a form job. But yeah. um, it's it's what the mechanism does, not what you think of it from sort of our real world, physical world labels of things. 
And we allow uh, visitors to the site to uh, submit images directly to the site. Um, and, and how many images have you got so far? Uh, there's just over 4,000. Oh, so your backups are timely, are, take some time. Uh, do you, yes. do you, how do you organize your media library? Do you use uh, some sort of folder mechanism? How do you find something in thousands of files? We tried that with uh, the very first site we developed. We used Happy Files. But uh, W.P. Tutts, I um, uh, can't remember his name now, um, uh, pointed me in the right direction. Um, uh, we use uh, uh, Admin Columns Pro. Yep. And if it wasn't for that, it would be a nightmare. Yeah. It would be an absolute nightmare. I just started using um, a media library folder scheme, a plugin that gives you a, the equivalent to a folder scheme, but it's virtual. Yeah. So you create folders, you can move images into the folders or to a different folder or move them any way you like folder wise. Yeah. And it doesn't, happy affect, files. it doesn't affect the URL for the image right. and therefore it doesn't break uh, anything sort of when you move things around. Um, and it get, allows you to upload directly to a folder yeah. so that you remove the step of get them into the library and then go from the library into the folders. And uh, um, for a project that I'm about to do, there are going to be images to choose from that I want to to, instead of having here's a hundred files and there's only five of them that are relevant to you, here's the five. Forget the other ninety-five, um, and so that's what I'm expecting it to be able to do. But um, I haven't found a plugin that does ex pretty much the same thing though for pages. I mean, there are plugins that do something similar to that, but not with the virtual sort of folder scheme. That Happy Files. Happy, Happy Files file. does it. Does it for. Uh, pages. Interesting. Happy files. I'll have to remember that. It does sound familiar. I don't know why. Um, is that something new? Happy files. No, it's been around about four or five years, I think. Okay. Well, with 50 or 60,000 plugins. <laughs> right. A few the other I thing we, we did uh, on another site, which is a, a site related to the one I just showed you, is uh, um, we have a photographic history of the uh, uh, First War Battalion uh, embedded in this other website. And before I started on, on the site, I uh, worried about how we were going to easily maintain the galleries of photos. And uh, I evaluated four different gallery plugins and came up with Foo Gallery. And Foo Gallery has the wonderful feature that if a particular um, image has a particular category, it will show in that gallery and otherwise it won't. So we have 14 different galleries now with over 2000 images. Hmm. Uh, and they're all, how an image dis, dis, uh, or appears is simply based upon the category. Right. Uh, well, that's and, why I say, I mean, category slash taxonomies are, are quite valuable um, and that once you start to understand how to make good use of them, you in your as in your case, when the numbers get too large for sort of human beings to comprehend them, that's when the information architecture tools like categories come into play. Um, My only and so quite sophisticated taxonomies with nested or because it could be hierarchical, you can get, quite a number of levels to work well and therefore make content much more easily accessed. When, especially when somebody 
when the scheme of the hierarchy is kind of logical and that when you are familiar with the subject matter, you can sort of look at it and say, oh, I know what's going on here. Uh, we are, we're all kind of familiar with the sort of parent, child, tree sort of like hierarchical way of organizing things. And right. so, uh, that's something. Anyway, okay. So thank you, Bill. Um, let's find the next person who would like some help. I, I have a situation, Doug, here. Um, I, uh, my wife has, runs a um, nonprofit. It's called Room for a Child. She's been running it for about 10 years. Um, it, we build beautiful bedrooms for student, for kids living in poverty. That's her elevator pitch. And we had someone, she had someone develop a website in WordPress um, many years ago. And he was a developer. He did a reasonable job. The site is a little bit outdated now. And I've had to deal, I've taken over the responsibility of managing the blogs and um, various galleries and so on. But I've had a, a tough time with PHP updates. Uh, I had no idea what they were until I ran into a problem where she was paying support for out, date, out of date PHP files. And I've been, at, I've been aware of the fact I need to do this about every year, year and a half. So I update- Let's, let's just check and see what, that we understand your reference to PHP. PHP. So you're talking about when a new version of PHP comes out. Yes. The process of upgrading. Yes. In order, because some things, for example, require a certain level of PHP, like a plugin yes. will say, it's gotta be 7.5 or higher, or, you know, I haven't run an 80 that say 8.1, but it's actually something that's very infrequently done because um, normally you wait till the end of life for a given PHP. That, that's what version. I do. I wait yeah. for the end of the life. And right. then I- But that's I like have... every three or four years though, isn't it? No, not no, I'm sure. talking about seven versus eight, for example, not the individual one, 7.3, 7.4, 7.5. I, I do it about every year, every 18 months. And I okay. know when I need to do it because- And so what is the problem then? What did you run into? I cannot update it to 8.1. Up until now, I've been able to update in the sevens um, up to 7.4. And so what's, what's, what's preventing you or what happens when you try to update? What message do you it, get back? It crashes. Crashes the site. Yes. And you get the sort of white screen or, you know, the debug I, mode with all that code at the top. It doesn't, I get white screen. Yeah. Right. And you know how to recover from that. Oh, I have backups. Yes. Well, there's easier <laughs> ways to recover. <laughs> if I you know what it is that's causing the, if, if it's changing I, the PHP version and you can change it back again. Uh, yes, I've done all, all yeah. that. Um, this last, uh, normally what I do is I upgrade, update all of the, the plugins. Right. And usually that solves the problem. So whatever uh, PHP upgrade I need to implement, it seems to work. But this right. time it did not. Now, are you, from, are you aware that there's a plugin called PHP compatibility? I am. And I used it. And, and I it went, came back clean? No. It doesn't cover seven point or eight point one. It says it does on the website, uh, the the host site, but it doesn't do it. Okay, well that's news to me. And and uh, um, uh, what I'm about surprised. 8 does it do eight point oh? Uh, I didn't try eight point oh. Uh, what what is it that 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 you need for it, that you need that requires eight point one? Uh, I don't know. That's the problem. I mean, I can continue to pay support for 7.4, but I don't want to do that. It's like but when you say pay for support, I'm not sure what you mean. There's well, nothing to support in PHP. Well, they tell me there is, and they're ooh, charging ooh. me. I, uh, I, I, I know, I N O S one on one. And is that a support sort of service? That's, that's a host. Oh, okay. And they sent out a, a, a notice saying that PHP, whatever version, 7.4, right. is no longer supported as of the end of December last year. But they have a 
three month period where they will continue to support it at no charge. Okay, so when you say support, you're not talking about anything active. You're just talking, well, let's put it this way. What they do in the host end is on their server, Yes. right? They specify which versions of PHP that server will support. Yes. But it's only flipping a switch. You know, yeah. 7.4, 7.5, 7.6. Yes. There's yes. no work involved. There's no cost involved. I get that. But they're still charging me $8 a month for that. But oh. don't you have your site hosted there? Yes. And they're charging... Okay, so I, they're charging you separately for PHP support? Yes. Never heard of it. Well, not only that, but eight bucks for the kind of support or the, the sort of cheap hosting, inexpensive hosting. Yes. It's, that's relatively expensive, inexpensive hosting. I mean, yeah. inexpensive hosting is like anywhere three, four, five dollars a month. Um, no, but in any event, but in any event, who cares? Um, so your your uh, concern over PHP is because your host is driving this process. Yes. Right. I wonder why they are. I mean, I get all kinds of notices from sites from the host of sites that I'm involved in, and uh, mostly just ignore them and get around to it when I feel like it because there's something I want to do that I can't run because the plugin. Uh, requires a higher level of PHP than have I've right. done that too. Right. And this time I uh, deactivated all of my plugins and updated the PHP to 8.2, and it still didn't work. Well, what about that's why I was asking about 8.0. 8.1 is pretty new. Okay, well, 8.0. Yeah. It, yeah. In fact, I think it's, I, I'm not. I think WordPress recommends that. Do they recommend that now, or are they still in the sevens? I can't recall. Oh, they recommend eight. They recommend eight zero. Yes. Um, not eight point one. Well, uh, I think eight point one is still sort of tentative, at least from a WordPress point of view. When but, I log uh, into their site and I can manually change the PHP, they recommend eight point one. Right. Well, I mean, why not try eight point zero? I can. Uh, I yeah, I, I guess the question is, we don't know what it is that's causing the site to crash. Right? Exactly. Now, you're this, doing the this. two settings, right? You're doing one setting on the server for your host, and you're doing another set, setting on the site itself, right? On the dashboard. Can I ask? Uh, uh, can I ask uh, just a second. Can I ask? Just a second. Just, just go to get the answer to this one question. Sorry. So you know there's a second setting that's no. in the WordPress site itself, right? Uh, no, I didn't. Yeah, that. I mean, if you're if you're not doing the second setting, then you have a server thinking you want one level of PHP, and the, the actual data that's being sent and things requested from that server are at another level of PHP. In other words, you have to tell the site and the server to both use the same version of PHP. I didn't know that. I okay, uh, and, and I can't recall right off the top of my head which. Where exactly it is on the you know the admin settings? I've never but had to do that before. A, just Google you know uh, change PHP setting, uh, and it will have both the host end and the app you know the the site end. And actually, if you go to your um, what do you call it, that health um, section of the site, are you familiar with that health check? I think it's called. Oh, health check. Yes, I've yeah. used that. That uh, has a section on PHP. Okay. And it okay. tells you what version you're running on that site. And so you might as well start there and look to see what it tells you. Okay. Um, and if it tells you it's a number other than what the hosting end has, then you got to go find the setting specific to your site and make that change. It's just a, a flip of a switch or just a select from a list. It's like nothing of consequence. Okay. Um, okay. I just can't remember whether it's in general settings or what. Uh, I I, I've never had to do this before, and I've probably done this about four times. So <laughs> you may have just be lucky, but as far as I know, uh, you've got to do both. Okay, I'll check. Because that out. because the app, you know, the the site end has to know what it's dealing with with the server, and the server has to know about the site. Right, each has to 
uh, be on the same level to be effective. Also, I, I have not been able to update the theme from the original yeah. person's development. He used something called U Design, and uh, I go through the documentation for the updates for U Design, and they go back many years, and I don't have them. I, I, I don't have the password that I need in order to update the, the, the theme. Would the theme be part of the problem? It could be. Well, yeah, I mean, a theme is um, having an out of date theme, let's put it that way. Yes. Is often the cause of problems. Okay. Partly because the theme updates are to keep it working properly with changes to the WordPress core. Right. right. And okay. freaking in the last few years, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, and one of the things that's happened is that. Uh, the community of theme developers uh, has largely um, sat on their hands waiting for full site editing to be further developed than it is now and have been reluctant to update classic themes. Or at least it seems like there are fewer updated classic themes than was the case a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, I think nowadays the with the changes that are occurring, the whole way in which themes are sort of created, evaluated, and chosen and used is going, it has become quite different than what it was a short time ago. No. And to my way of thinking, the sooner that you can get into a um, sort of modern theme that's done and with the current best practices in theme design, um, which might involve, I mean, what sort of a site is it? I mean, how complex a site is it that you're talking it's about? Pretty simple site. It's called Room for a Child, all one word. dot ca. Right, but is it mostly sort of textual content with images and 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 files to support the text? Yeah. Yes. There's a blog that's updated fairly recently. Every okay. Time she the reason I ask that is is that the um, expert recommendation on how to look at Gutenberg themes or block themes, as they're now called, is that a site which has primarily got, you know, sort of text and image content, but is not mm -hmm. doing anything particularly sophisticated, say as Bill's site does, where no. he wants okay. to run a double query uh, with about eight different, you know, um, no. taxonomies or category schemes in ACF fields. One would not recommend this, uh, but if in your particular case, so, and so the advantage here is that the, way in which themes are now done um, puts most of the emphasis on the designer, on the theme builder is on the design of the theme because the implementation components are provided to him in a way that wasn't the case before. So themes become much easier to both update and to change. So that you can have theme X today, and then three months from now, you see a block theme you like better because they're both block themes, they're both built essentially the same way, they become interchangeable. Plus, uh, Doug, uh, Doug might want to just go to something like Ocean WP. What's and try or, it or Astra or, you know, any yeah. Cadence, any of the really big guns, big in the sense that when you buy their theme, you're not actually getting a specific theme, you're getting kind of a framework in which you have now a hundred different uh, you know, what they call starter templates, which are template packages for a, an entire site, the front page, the about page, yeah. kind of all that's done and ready to go in one sort of drop. Um, but, they're, but the way in which you work with the theme will be the same regardless of the developer. Now, a classic theme is pretty much an individual sort of work of art um, in the way that the theme is used or you administer it. So, you know, in the case of Astra, for example, the classic Astra theme might have 200 customizer settings. And the individual settings and the way they're organized is whatever Astra wanted to do. There was no kind of model to follow. They just did what they liked. And mm -hmm. they kind of liked doing that because once you were in an Astra theme and had learned how to use it, you were low to change the theme. Yes. Except within their small world, because you'd have to learn all this stuff over again. The new block theme world 
has blown that off completely because it, you know, people rightly concluded uh, most WordPress users don't want to screw around with classic themes. They want a theme they can look at and then implement and what they implement looks like what they thought they were buying. And now they just go in and change whatever they like about it. The color yeah. scheme, the typography. No, I don't like that blog archive page. I want to change the layout. Whether you go with the layout that came with the theme or not, you also have this block inventory and patterns inventory from wordpress.org that gives you now hundreds of alternatives to whatever came with your theme that work just by dropping them in place and using them. There, there's no complexity or navigation in that regard. So um, in your particular case where you've got an, an old theme which has a licensing problem, you don't have a password for it. Uh, you don't know how active the developer is in keeping it up to date. And in particular, what PHP version does it run, versions does it run on, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so moving out of your current theme into something right in the mainstream of WordPress activity that's got the latest in the practices that have recently evolved um, and benefits, just plain benefits from the much higher ease of use in all these components. And they're, they're um, what's the opposite of fragility? They're, they're stabil stability in the changes you make and keep track of uh, work much better for you. Now, in other words, if you've got a particular way you want to treat something that is used in various places in the site, the ways in which that works are much more, are much stronger and more stable than has been the case. Cadence, for example, which is a um, theme that I'm, I use a fair bit now because it, um, it has the sort of block editor part of the brain available and working within that theme. But the theme itself is sort of, a combination of sort of classic techniques and new techniques in a way which seems very familiar, has a familiar feel to Gutenberg, but it doesn't depend upon the full site editor, which th these developers at Cadence think hey, it's not quite really prime time. And if you're depending on your site from a business point of view and you want to do things that are, you know, moderately complex or, or like e-commerce, for example, you know, you don't want to be in full site editing because WooCommerce hasn't really figured that out completely. Um, so in theory, Cadence is a nice combination of modern and up-to-date, it's only like two, three years old, big enough user base to keep the developer, you know, in, in, um, in money. Um, it's actually owned by a larger outfit, WP Engine, which is a big hosting company. And... Um, uh, Whenever you've got something that's just, hey, I want to lay out a page in a particular way and turn it into a custom post type of thing, they don't even, they don't support custom post types directly. You can do it, but they have another scheme that's simpler. And uh, when you stop and think, of, once you understand what it is they're offering, you think, well, this is pretty effective. I mean, in other words, they make this notion of a chunk of something, could be a whole page, could be just part of a page, it could be a header or a footer, it could be a sidebar, um, whatever you want to sort of make it, they'll provide you with a container. And then you say, then say to you, well, you could put this literally in a template or on a post by post or page by page basis with just a few keystrokes. And then whenever you make a change to this element, that's what they call them, then whenever it comes into use because of the page is displayed, it'll be the most recent version um, that you've been working with. Um, and this can be used anywhere, can see anywhere you can think of on a page or a sidebar or a header or footer or wherever. And so that's their solution to the problem of custom post types haven't quite made the transition to the Gutenberg world completely. Um, however, in false site editing now, creating templates is very straightforward. Now they're not, custom post templates with taxonomies, 
for example, but they're custom post types in the sense that it's a custom layout and you can you know, um, add a page or a post and choose a different custom template for it that just gives you a different layout. And that's just click, you know, bang, I like a new template, give it to mm -hmm. a name, it opens up, create whatever you want as a layout, save it, and then go to the new page or post. Um, and you select it just like a block. You mean type the name in and it comes up with the choices of these things, right. elements. And you click whatever you want and it inserts it and you're done. And then of course, all the settings and so on are uh, in the right sidebar in a standardized format so that once you're familiar with it, every block from any developer will be approximately the same layout and labels and everything else. So that's a tremendous headache on us that's been relieved. Hmm. Um, so. Well, interesting. I, I think I've got a few ideas to check out specifically with regards to the PHP, but as far as the re redeveloping it in a new theme, that's an awful lot of work. And I'm not so sure that the uh, WordPress is the right vehicle for that because this is a pretty straightforward site and I'm right but there are if you um, look at the migration uh, plugins with migration capabilities you will find that you get a very fine-grained control of looking at the current site and saying what in the current site do I want to move to a new site like right down to the level of you know almost well individual posts and pages but also things like taxonomies, meta values, and so on. Um, so that's become quite sophisticated. Moving content from, from an old site to a new site with a new theme, I mean, in a sense, just a staging site for this temporary purpose of moving from one to the other. You don't actually have to have a second hosting account. Anyway, that's a, 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 a quite practical way to go about creating a new site, is you don't take the theme away and replace it with a new theme because that's got a lot of issues in it. You create okay. a new site, uh, put the new theme on it, get it working and adjusted, and then just move, migrate the content from one to the other. Because if you're just moving the post table, for example, from one database to another, that's pretty much idiot proof, right? If you're moving the, um, well, basically all the content of the site is in the database. So, yeah. Once you're looking at, I'm sorry. Yeah, I I think that uh, if it, if De Doug creates a a staging site and then just switches themes, right? There's no work to it. What's a staging the, site? Staging site is just something that's that you create for like a particular purpose, like try a new theme out or top you clone your existing site. The yeah. new site. Be you call a staging site just to give it a label. Okay. And the purpose of the staging site is to let you test something okay. new, a new version of WordPress, for instance. You okay. implement that on the staging site, let's say it works. Then the staging site, uh, through a process which you refer to as promoting the changes from the staging site to the production site, well then some hosts will do that for you as part of what they offer. That's what a staging site is for, make changes, and then they're moved to the new site in a one step, one click process, right? Okay. But what I was talking about was a staging site um, can, be, can be moved in this manner uh, at a very fine grain of detail in what is moved. Like you could say, I wanna move just the pages, I wanna move just the post or just a sec subset of those, either of those two. Um, and I don't want to move any, uh, uh, there are no custom post types, there are no custom templates or whatever. Um, but whatever exists on the staging site, you can determine what of that is to be moved. Well, all it is is just replacing what the current site has with what's on the staging site. Yes. Without you having to know the details of what goes where. Okay. You simply, that's what a staging site does. There's a plugin uh, called WP Staging. WP yeah, the Pro Staging. version is pretty expensive, relatively speaking, uh, yeah. but it gives you the greatest degree of control. Yeah. What, uh, some hosts, for example, SiteGround, 
and the managed services hosts like Kinsta and WP Engine, they give you a staging site capability. One click creates the staging site, one click moves the changes, any differences between the staging site and the production site, the host takes care of moving them. Um, and one would think debugging any issues that arise. But just on the question of the PHP, um, uh, first find out where the, go to your health check and find out what version of PHP you're on is the first point. Then the next point is, is if it's different from what the host setting is, then find the setting on the WordPress dashboard, the admin panels, right? where you select the version of PHP that's the same as what the hosting has. Okay. And that may be, well, that's certainly the first step to do and then see where that okay. takes you. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll, right. I'll try that. Thank you so much, Good both enough. of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, who would like to be next? Uh, give it a go. Sure. All right. Our way. So, uh, my name is Dave Gillen. My background is an industrial electrician. Uh, I also uh, have extensive background in uh, PHP, uh, SQL database uh, administration. And Can I just interrupt you one second? So was, was, the, was I explaining correctly the notion of the server has a PHP setting or at least which yes, my PHP actually my host provider allows me to be able to choose which version of PHP. I right, want. and so that's been my experience as well. But yes. there is another setting on the on the site side, right? That has I to haven't be seen consistent it consistent with the host. I have yeah, I've seen not it. seen that neither. But that's not to say that it's not there. Okay. Well, I'm, because because I know there is a health checks, you know. Yes, uh, there is that health a check. portion which specifically reports on the PHP version you're running. Yes. And we'll say to you, okay, you're running a deprecated version of PHP or whatever. But anyway, okay, I'm sorry for the interruption. I just uh, want that's to take advantage right. of your PHP. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, I do have an issue with uh, my WordPress site, and I'm hoping that you can. If you can't help me directly, you might be able to help me indirectly and point me in the right direction. Is uh, I'm going to just start sharing my screen and, and show you. Sure. And, Go ahead. and that will start the whole thing off. Let me get this. Okay. So um, give me two seconds. I got to take it off maintenance mode. going to be a little slow here because uh, I live in the country and I had DSL modem and uh, I um, just upgraded to Starlink so there we go Okay, you still with me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to share a screen. Okay, can you see that? Is that all right? Yep. They okay. build things. Yeah, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> all right, so on, on the website, I've got everything here. But what my problem is, is if I go to a host, it's going to be a little slow. I've got a lot of stuff going on. Now, where the problem is, is down here, if when I go to log in, I don't know if you can see the, the bottom portion of my screen where it says 
the bottom left-hand corner where it usually shows you the link you're going to? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. Yeah, it says new user registration. Right. But that's a page. It's not the actual user registration. So I've clicked on login and it comes up. Nothing found. Are you, you using WP Discuss? Yes, I, I'm sure, I, I should have mentioned that, yes. Now, I did have a, uh, a thing in there for, it was a, a redirect plugin. And I, if you looked in the uh, comment section on the original uh, posts that were put up on the, uh, your uh, WordPress thing, it showed that I had it in there and, and it didn't change anything. I think it's so, a setting in WP Discuss. You believe so? Yeah. Okay, well then we can go there and do that. Oh. So, WP Discuss. Do you know this uh, plugin much or? Yeah, I use it, but uh, you know, I set it up a couple of years ago. It's a, it's a little thousands. bit confusing. They don't make it quite easy, but. No, they sure don't. Um, so, go to the forms. I looked at that and I didn't see anything in there. I think it's in there. Okay. And what does it say where you log in? Name, email. I, I looked at this and I couldn't find anything on that. Uh, I know the change was made, but I, I can't remember where I made it. So. I th I'm virtually certain it's in WP Discuss somewhere. I remember having the same problem. Okay, well, but, let's, but, let's go back, go because there's something, I, I actually got a bit of help from the, the developers, but this one I just couldn't get anything on. How about comment form settings? Uh, where are we here? Right here? Yeah. The problem is a wonderful plugin. It's just that there are a thousand different settings. Oh, I know. It's, it's mind boggling. No, and see, I'm there, actually I... thinking these days that that's a, that's a disadvantage when you've got so many choices, especially if they're not very well organized. Or let's put it this way the more choices, the more important it is that they be well organized because oh, I agree you with that 100%. Navigate I agree with that 100%, but it's just no, it's, I'm not suggesting that we could do anything about it. Other than, no, no, no. Well, that's the, 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 the things that I was saying uh, to Doug in terms of the um, block editor scheme and so on is in part dealing with that because it, it you know, the, the creativity that developers of plugins use in the way they organize things it has the disadvantage of most of them not being very good at it. And so therefore <laughs> it may look pretty, but it doesn't necessarily provide you something you can make that you can make work for you. So you don't you don't really have really uh, any answer for this on then if, that, if that's if that's and that's fine if you don't that's I'm no Bob I think uh, other than Bill um, so where exactly does it do you specify what the login means well, see, where where did the link come from that that you were referring okay, to when I first outset? put I put, what happened was I put I wanted to have a custom login page before I had done anything else. And then I put in the redirect plugin and then the redirect plugin redirected the login link to the page that I wanted for the, re for the login. But then I ran into problems with the login page. So I thought, well, I'll just go back to where I started from and leave it alone. Now it doesn't want to go back to that. And so I tried to, uh, so I tried, I, I uninstalled the uh, redirect plugin, but for some reason it didn't stop the redirect. And so now I'm, I'm almost at the Sorry, point where I'm on the redirect, do you know what mechanism it used? Do you know what 
if you're on an Apache server or, or an NGINX yes. server? Apache. Well, the reason being because the what these redirects do as often as not is write rules into Writing the, the HTTP access file. file. Okay. And so you might look in there just to see whether okay. uninstalling yep. actually deleted the line that's otherwise added to produce yeah, the redirect. I never even considered that thought. Yep. Okay. Actually, HTTP so access is just a text file anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah easy yeah. enough to find. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I'm 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 familiar with that. Um, Dave, I posted my email address. If you want to work through WP Discuss, uh, I'm delayed to help. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's one of these things, Dave, that. So you don't think it's you're, been you're familiar to the database, with it, right? Is that what you're figuring? That the changes that the, the redirect changes that the, the plugin did weren't actually written into the database, but were written into the HD access file. Well, if it's an Apache server, that's the mechanism. The okay, NGINX, okay. which is the alternative to Apache. I, 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 I can FTP and I, I get that all figured out, no problem. Then I could look right, at but the but the um, uh, other way that um, these directives, I think that's what they're called, rewrite directives are implemented um, is slightly different on the NGINX server, but not so much as, it's just a slightly different mechanism of, yep. of how they work. But I don't know, for example, on a rewrite plugin, whether a, a redirection plugin, whether or not uninstalling it removes the rules that it, add, that it added, nope. but just nope. read the plugin documentation. And if it doesn't explicitly say so, then I would assume that it doesn't. Okay. No, I, and, then, I, and, and, and in any event, once you look at the HT access file, you should be able to eyeball any yep, rule yep, yep. that looks like it's dealing with what you know you'll recognize the login I, I'm, path, I'm, right? I'm familiar with the ht access file i'll be able to figure that out if i see it yeah, yeah. i just never dawned on me to look in there no and you think it, with the comments yeah, that's, issue another, like that's this, another that's another win that's a pretty sort of deep technical kind of thing <laughs> yeah no it's uh i've dealt with them before for many other options that i have a lot of I have a lot of background in this stuff because I was a web designer. Well, just uh, on the question of background, if you want to um, stop your share for a second, let me just pull up an article on this PHP question. Okay, hold on. <laughs> um, oh, dude, not a new share. Get out of here. So how do I shut the share off? Uh, just go back oh. to the share button. Or rather, uh, it should share. be a red thing um, in the... I, as I recall, in the top. Oh, stop, sure, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, red button yeah. or something. This and is my first my time name. on Zoom, so bear with me. All uh, right, so. So do you see the page that I'm on? Yep. Um, so here's the health check part that I was mentioning before. Um, right, tools, site health. Yep. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then they talk about changing at the host level and site ground. Where's the one that, and that's, I just saw something here. Things to do after updating, no? Ah, uh, there you are. Now, the uh, word uh, WP beginner used to be, or, you know, until very recently was a pretty reliable place. However, I've learned and been burned a couple of times that um, if it's reviewing anything, like a plugin, which is 75% of probably what their blog posts are about, or no, maybe half, they have a tendency to tout the products of their parent company. And of course, they wouldn't dream of telling us about it. And so uh, in one case, they were touting this um, uh, specialized page builder called Seed Prod. I read it and I thought, oh, okay, I'll give this one a whirl. <laughs> then I learned that that's one of their products and it's not actually as good as they say and so on and so forth. So in a case like this, there's nothing they're selling, at least their parent is selling. So it's pretty reliable. But um, now I just, I thought I saw something here about the setting on the site itself. And I was just, uh, where, 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 where are we? Um, 
normally WordPress hosts automatically update the PHP version in the background. It does not affect most websites and you won't necessarily notice any change. Um, well, I wonder where I got, where I've been changing this thing on the sites. <laughs> I thought it would go through this here, but I don't see anything on at the site level. Okay, sorry guys, I misread what I was looking at. So let's go back to uh, curses. Okay. Uh, who would like to be next? Tony or Robert, either you guys want to go? Okay, I'll give it a try. Do you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, I want to say I'm delighted to be here. Uh, all this wisdom and knowledge and skill is uh, <laughs> it's astonishing. I don't know how you guys remember all that. Okay, I'm going to share the screen and go to my problem. I'm working on a WordPress Elementor. I have three columns, and all I want to do in this center column is edit a paragraph. And I first don't know the meaning of edit page or edit with Elementor. Which one should I use? You, you can use either, but uh, if the page was created in Elementor, the edit with Elementor page should go to that page. Okay. Otherwise, if you go to edit page, you go back to the standard editor, and then you have to do a second click to edit with Elementor. Same yeah, thing. I, I, in a nutshell, if it if it was created with Elementor, you edit it with Elementor. Well, the lady that created it retired and left me. So she says, you can learn this, Tony. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Now I got two options here, site settings and theme builder. Does this matter here? It, it, uh, it, it does, but it doesn't affect your page. Okay, so I'm just going to click on the top execute, edit with Elementor, and see what happens. Nothing. So I guess I go to site settings, right? No, no, go to edit page. Oh. Uh, oh it, there you are. No, it's just Elementor takes a bit. Okay. So let's wait till this loads. Is this Elementor free or Elementor Pro? It's free. Okay. And okay, here it comes. Uh, so now I scroll down to where I want to do that work. Now here's my problem. I, I'm confused. Uh, you know, do I start with edit column or do I start with this? What, what is it you want to change? I just want to put in, I want to work this paragraph. It's it. I copied it. Uh, in other words, you want to make some tech, you want to change the text somewhere. Yeah, that's all. I just added some text in here. I can't, I don't know how to get in there. I, oh, I, just I, click it. Just click the, go, yeah. click where you, right there. Click. Okay, I did. And now I get over here on the far left, uh, short code oh. business. Okay, well, so that's not Elementor. You, you've got some sort of, plugin that is creating that text i'm 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 in the woods and i don't have a compass okay well get out of uh, see the hamburger in the upper left of the left okay go click that click exit exit, exit. oh okay so all you're doing is getting out of uh you can click uh decide later Okay, so exit. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, so you must have a plugin that is creating that short code. Okay. I, I missed that is Bill is um, the content in question uh, brought in with a short code. 
Uh, that's what it looked like when he clicked on okay. that. Well, that because the, uh, the answer is that you have to go to the place which generates the short code in order to change it, right? Right. But I mean, why would a plugin be using a short code into an elementary section? Uh, what, what's it? It must be. Is it dynamic content? Is it coming from somewhere or being compiled or something? Because if it's just text entered with the keyboard. What do you need a, a widget with a short code for? Exactly. I don't see the. The other uh, thing is menu. that, yeah, I mean, even if that was a widget with short code that brought it in, clicking in that space should bring a border around the content in question, if it's from the widget or the whole column area that we're talking about, something to identify that you're in the place you want to be when you click, right? Or as you say, just click and then start, you know, select text, delete it, replace it. Um, what I thought was going to appear is a text editor widget, but it didn't. It brought up a short code widget. Uh, can I just ask, what are you using? Seed, seed prod is what I referred to when I was talking about that. WordPress beginner, WP beginner issue. The seed prod is one of their own, their parent company's plugins, All right? <laughs> and if you've got Elementor, Elementor is about 10 times as good as seed prod. And there's a very little that seed, prod, well, I can't think of anything that seed prod can do that Elementor can't do better. And just the fundamental sort of best practice is um, don't add capabilities you already have because they'll undoubtedly cause you a headache. So uh, it looks like this is what you're saying, Robin, is that you think that that shortcut was code was developed with seed prod? No, um, I, I'm not familiar with if with seed prod even does that. Seed prod is, is a kind of a specialized miniature page builder that's focused, uh, was focused way back when on coming soon maintenance and then kind of morphed into landing page sort of page building, uh, which is what it's currently sort of positioned itself as. But as I say, knowing something about Elementor and Beaver Builder and so on, um, I can't see any value to seed prod if you've already got Elementor and are learning it, um, I don't see what benefit there would be in adding another page builder. Yeah, I agree. At the expense of less time spent with Elementor. And they don't give you very many templates with CPRON anyway. Anyway, let's go back to the page in question and just have another look at that widget question. Can we do uh, that? Do I go back up here to go back? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, whichever way you're comfortable with. Oh, what, what's the theme here anyway? Uh, ocean, I think. Okay, so that's like a modern up to date theme, right? I think. Actually, it's a pretty good theme. Um, all right. Here we go. Now, that na is that Navigator not part of Elementor? Yes. Right. Um, so when you click one of those sections in there, anyone just from the, the navigator that? menu, from the navigator menu, slide over, your over there, just to show you how it works, that click a section and that section should be highlighted. No, other other side. Other oh, side that's of the my cursor that's sitting there. <laughs> it's wondering where your cursor is going. Okay, yeah, just to illustrate that, this is to help you get to the right section that you want to work with, oh. right? So this is, you click on one of those, right? It'll take you to the section that you, so this is a way to say, okay, I'm not sure where I am. Um, click the section and then you'll be sure okay. where you are. Click, so in this particular click case, though, the navigator doesn't tell you, actually click one of those arrows to the left the of the left. word section. No, just uh, back to the menu open it up 
You mean like this? No, no, you're stay in the navigator and just open one of the sections by clicking one of the little arrows to oh, the no left. Way. Right. Okay. Now click the column menu. Click no, click the arrow. Keep opening them. <laughs> right? That's Keep crazy. Going. <laughs> Keep going. Go right to the bottom of any one of them. Just pick one and go all the way down. Oh my God. I never knew this. Okay, so now click there. on text editor. Yeah. Now that'll take you to some place. Oh where my you God. should be able to edit the text. Now it should be highlighting where it is, right? I don't see. No, no, oh, back to the navigator. Yeah. Like what's on the left side is not relevant right now. Okay. We're just, we're just wanting, we're trying to find out how we identify where the yellow column is. Yeah. So um, click on the click on the yellow column. It should take you. The navigator should reflect. Oh, it. there it came up. Short code. Okay, keep going though. Yeah, keep um, going down. Keep going down. No, no, keep going down the navigator. Just use the scroll bar to bring it down a bit more. Let's. Is there anything under short code? No. Now see the eye to the right there. Short code. Just click on that. Oh, okay, you so did it. That bottom. Just short did, it. did, but I mean that's like turn off the display, don't, okay, we just wanted to see what it did, now we can change it back. All right, so we're in the right place now, and there's our short code, where did it come from though? Um, you know, click on column, maybe it's just a display thing. The column here, uh, up here? No, just the one just below short code, right there, click the left, right, and keep, there's nothing else there, right? No, it's a whole column is short coded in, or at least the content of the column is brought in. Now we have to figure out where is the short code coming from. Okay, so now you know, in theory, like if you look above there where it says test text editor, like for the, as you move up the navigator above there, where, yeah, so you see, stop, stop, just right at the bottom now of the navigator. Don't touch anything, just look. You see where it says text editor? Right here. Yes. Now, depending on where that is, I'm not suggesting you use it right now, but if if the column in question has that, then by clicking on the text editor, you should be able to then start editing text directly. I get yeah, the theory. Cool. I got you. Okay, that's okay. all I wanted to say there. Now just click it. Uh, okay. Okay, and, now go over to the left, scroll down. But it's it's not coming up. The yes, text, it is. It, it is. The text editor only has the words "goals and dreams" in it. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, that's the, that's this one over here on the. Yep, and, yeah. and you could also you see the little uh, pencil icon in the top right corner of that container. No, back to goals. Stay there. No, stay there. Stay now there. go to the corner. Click that. Click it. Nothing's happening. Okay, so it's because it's already up. Um, uh, the more modern practice is to put a toolbar right where the text editor is and let you start typing text immediately, but they've made that, limited that to the sidebar, right? So your text editor only appears in the sidebar as opposed to a toolbar hovering over the text you're, you want to edit. Which actually, I mean, I, that's this is the widget now because Elementor does that, right? Elementor gives you a toolbar uh, with every, you know, container so within. Yeah, Elementor. it doesn't, the toolbar only appears on the left. So when you're, okay, now, well, toolbar for editing, right? But if you're right. in a, if you're looking at a column, for instance, and you want, and you click, because you want to go from one column to two columns, right? That's on a toolbar that's right by the column, correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's that's what I was referring to. Toolbar, not necessarily text, but for all the functions that are specific to that particular container. Right. Or element or whatever. Okay, so let's go back to um, where that widget thing was. You mean over here? No, no, yeah, down a little bit. Down to where it says column short code, like this is going to give us the yellow one. Yeah, click that one. That's okay, yellow. so now we have to figure out. Click the on the left side there where it says there's an advanced tab. 
let's find out what the advanced tab offers. Okay, so wait a second. Content protection. Is... Well, I don't think it's there. Yeah, I mean. It's just a short code. It's coming from somewhere. Right, but the short code's in the um, other tab, right? And so, I mean, let's find out where it says edit short code in the black bar at sort of the top of that column. There's a hamburger menu up there. Yeah, let's click that and just see what it does. Site settings, theme builder, user preferences, navigate from page notes. Find it's notes. not in Elementor, Robin. Right, but that's, oh, so in other words, Elementor only knows it's a widget, a rather a short code, it doesn't know anything about where it came from. That's correct. If I, if okay. I can ask, is there a secondary plugin that's creating those short codes? Well, it has to be I, because, because be. the be. Elementor doesn't plugin. work that way, right? Could you go into the uh, install plugins and see if you can find? Yeah, them? let's look in, in in the dashboard at the plugins and see which one might be the uh, miscreant. Dashboard. Yeah, no, yeah, back up to the top and then uh, home. What That's the home page as right opposed there? to. No, we want to go to um, you know the admin panel. Uh, yeah, you need to get go through exit. All right. So we have to exit Elementor. Bottom, uh, down the bottom. There we go. Apply. Why not? Oh, select WP dashboard and click apply. Now click, okay, leave, yes. Whoa. All right. It is ocean. I was right. <laughs> okay. So let's go to um, plugins. That's somewhere around. Oh, here it is. Oh, you got a lot of stuff in there. Okay. What are we looking for? No, well, sure. there's something that would do this kind of thing. <laughs> Instead of the tools. There's an elementor. Uh, no, don't touch that. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, what's this content views? Query and display post pages and awesome layouts. Grid scroll. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, nah. Um. Yeah, keep scrolling down. Hang on. Um, what's this happy elementor add-ons is uh, widgets, table builder, uh, news ticker, image. Grid. It's like unlimited elements. Right, but it doesn't have short codes then. Well, it's not activated anyway. Right, you're right. Yes, uh, actually, let's just look at uh, installed plugins. Oh, wait a second. That'll include all this. Um, Activated plugins. Just scroll up to the top. This one? No, no. Go to, no. Don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> scroll up to the top of this page. Okay. And down a bit. At the top of the list. Uh, okay. Uh, click on the word active. Just above bunk actions. Right. Click active. Actually, there's only four inactive ones, so. All right. Admin columns. No. Well, that's only in the, you know, what you see here, for example, not the pages or posts of the yeah. site. Category 10 pages. No, 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 no. Okay. No. No. Keep going. Keep, keep going down. Wow.
There are short codes altered. Oh, there's it. And it's active. Okay, there should be a setting somewhere. On the left, just about four down on the left. Where it says short codes? Yeah, try that. On the black bar. In the black bar. Down, no, keep down, going down. Down, down. The left side down, bar, down, down. left menu. Down, 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 down. Users, tools, there it settings. Is. Oh my God. There you Under go. settings. Now what? Click it. Click that. Click settings. Hey. <laughs> well, we don't know yet, but we're hoping. Oh, we're getting there. Paragraph short code classic in the version certain button. Enable short codes in text widgets. Mm. Where's that? Yeah, well, I wonder what it does. Um, I think one thing though, from what we've seen so far is that you, um, you've inherited this site, I take it, right? Yeah, this lady made it for me. Because the, the Without knowing what a plugin's doing, you're pretty much at the mercy of sort of, you know, the gods uh, when something goes wrong. Because normally, if you select a plugin, learn how to use it, do something with it, six months later, you'll vaguely recall what it was that that thing did. When plugins are doing things that you've never heard of before, um, you're pretty much, you know, in the dark here. So, for example, you need to look at this short codes plugin as, oh, well, uh, somebody just given me a new plugin. I, I got to learn how to use it. Well, that's the only way you're going to figure out if it's causing the problem. If it's okay. used broadly on your site, then it's pretty important to learn what it does because that affects what you can do at a most basic level, right? Gotcha. Right. Through if it's that. replacing the text editor function in Elementor with something else, right? Then you need to decide first and foremost, why do I have that? Why can't I just do it all in Elementor? What is this What is this plugin adding that Elementor doesn't provide? Right. And, you, and, you, and, and understanding that is halfway to sort of resolving the issues. Right. Um, if it's doing nothing that you can identify that's different, then you wanna pick one place where it's used um, you know, uh, capture the content in some way so that you can turn it off and then just use Elementor to see if you can replicate what the content was that the short code, you know, plugin did. Right? Yeah, we still don't know where that text is being created. Right. Well, it's got to be somewhere here in the in these settings, right? Somewhere, somewhere the text has been created and then the short code is in effect the sort of the label or handle for it, right? So that where you use the short code, it, the short code is just replaced by whatever that text is somewhere else or, yeah, or but, image or what have you, right? Yeah, but- So in other words, a, 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 a short code is like a placeholder for content somewhere else that is brought into that particular place when the page is displayed. Uh, why is this necessary? Is, is the key question you want to answer. I, I now, wonder the, 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 it's not CSS, because that's just saying whatever you create, um, whatever you create in content, uh, if you have a particular set of CSS rules that you want to apply to it, that's where you put them. But there are no rules provided. Hopefully that means that whatever you insert with a short code is then its layout is governed by whatever is set for the particular container in question, right? Like the way it works on the block side is, blocks are designed in such a way as to automatically inherit whatever the theme, colors and typography and other settings happen to be, right? 
though this is the sort of equivalent of it in a particular plugin. Enable shortcodes in term descriptions and text widgets. What would happen if we deactivated this one plugin and went back to the page? I guess I'd kind of want to know where the content is. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be some place that's like a, a, a listing of posts or pages, right? Um, and those are the content chunks with the corresponding short code for each alongside them, right? Because yeah. this is not something you use once. This is something you use a dozen times, right? I mean, you wouldn't need a short uh, this plugin if you just wanted to put content into one column one time. It would be crazy to do that with a plugin. Yeah, exactly. So it's really important. So go to the documentation for this plugin and find out where you access the text, images, and other content that is created for use with the plugin. Right, because the short code is just the implementation of the thing. It's not the thing that's being inserted, right? Uh, I can't believe that we don't have. So something that tells us, you know, where the heck this these short codes. Let's click the about. Oh, oh. I just clicked on uh, short code there. Okay, well, let's look at that. Um, most powerful. Okay, so where? The plugins in action. So, which of these would be what you've been working with? Um, let's click view all short codes, see if there's a text one. Two short codes for creating flexible multi column. Do we have a multi column layout? Uh, I, I mean, multi column. Well, yes, does that just mean you know two or more columns, or does it mean text is distributed like newspaper columns are? Right, you go down one column and then start at the top of the next column and start the next to the third column until the text runs out. Right. Uh, keep going down to content. Button label, the lighter highlight, heading. Well, this is all the componentry to act as a page builder, right? Columns, yeah. boxes, rows, tabs, accordions. I mean, those are just layout elements, right? So I, I can't see the purpose of this against um, elementary. Oh. So let's click on docs. That's my wife calling. And um, <laughs> so roll. I got to answer that. Hold on, please. Hey, what's up, <laughs> Jenny? Oh, she hung up. Okay, I'm back. Okay, you guys there? Right. So. Um, we want to scroll down and look for something indicating where. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on a conference call, honey. I know it's been, it's complicated. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'll see you. Bye. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she's going to take me out to dinner in 10 minutes. You guys there? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Robin, I, I don't think that the content is in here from the looks of it. Okay. So, like back back so where does the content come from? Well, uh, that's why I'm wondering what happens if we disable this sure. this plugin and go back to the page and see if the page still is being rendered. 
So does that go click here or how do I go back? You, you go back like you were going to the back arrow. Keep going. Oh no, uh, go to uh, the, the other, oh, there, there you are. Okay, now go to plugins. Okay. Installed. Plugin file editor. What what is that? Uh, uh, that enables you to change the code for a plugin. It's not what you want. Okay. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> All right, here we go. Keep going down. Okay. Find the short codes plugin. Keep going down. Oh, is that in alphabetical? Is that an S? Yes. Here we go. Deact Ultimate. Deactivate. Oh, wait a second, guys. Um, I'm just looking at the free version of this plugin, right? And uh, uh, there's definitely a place where the content is created, short code by short code. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> would it be found in tools well you know what guys i think it's just a question um tony uh, you can start off at the page in the uh wordpress.org you know where the free version of this is found right it's just okay. short codes ultimate and um if you scroll down to the screenshot sections You'll now, see, for example, um, content being created for the short code to operate on. And then you just have to backtrack and figure out where that is in the documentation. I'm, I'm going to have to beg uh, your forgiveness and leave uh, with respect. And I'll catch you next week. Uh, I'll play with this. In the meantime. Yeah, the key question is, what is this plugin contributing that uh, the, the core blocks and Elementor um, aren't able to do? Um, I mean, that's, that's the essential question. What is, learn enough about the plugin to figure out what unique thing it offers that uh, you wouldn't otherwise have. Um, and then you know, try Bill's suggestion of just turn deactivate the plugin, see what happens, knowing that you could just go back and activate it again and return to where you were. Because you're not going to do anything once the it's inactive. You just want to look and see what the result is. If if I can add an observation, Tony, when I inherited the site that I did years ago, that's exactly what I did. I took the plugins one at a time, disabled them, and oh. opened the site just just to see what happened. And then I turned it back on again and went to the next one and turned it off. Or I disabled them one at a time until they were all off. And you'll, you'll <laughs> hopefully figure it out. But it's it's not easy. But there's definitely some place, um, Tony, where you create the content that will be brought into a page or post using the short code. Right. Like right. It's content, like think of the content like a post or a page, but instead of implementing it in the usual way, you stick it into something else. But it right. still has to be, you know, you still have to create the content somewhere. Right. You have to write it and edit it and right. control and it. just like a, you know a template or other external element that you then use selectively. There's got to be some place where that's created, managed. Uh, where can you go and delete it or update it? Right. I mean, it's impossible to imagine not being able to update the content for a short code, uh, and that's in the documentation. Okay. I got to go, guys. Okay. Thank you so much.
No problem. Thank you again. Dave, you had a, is Dave still here? Dave just put in the chat that he had a short question. Yeah, I do. I'm here. Okay. Your quick question, because I think you'll be the last one tonight. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's getting pretty close to the end. Uh, just, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, cascading style sheets. Mm. So, I'll go back <laughs> I'm to much my... less familiar with 3.0 than I am with the predecessors, but. Um... I'll go back to my uh, site. I'll share my screen. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the page not found. Now, what I'm looking at here is you can see the width from this side. Yep. Over to this side. Yep. That's the same as the home page is the same width. But when I right. go to the post, the width is reduced. And right. I like so I, I, actually, that's not, I mean, it is CSS, but it's, what theme do we have here again? I'm sorry? Which theme do we have? Uh, I did have it posted originally. I just got rid of it. Hang on a sec. I can find that out real quick. Because there's a, there are several settings. One is the setting for a normal page uh, with like a poster page right. that has margins, right? And then there's another one, which is referred to as full width which is normally what you use on a home page or a front page where the content goes from side to side in the available window space. Go ahead. So I'm using Pressbook masonry blocks and that is a child theme of Pressbook. Right. So if um, I go to appearance and I Customize. Hang there's on just a sec. I just want to see if there's any block with. Yeah, go ahead. Customize. There's nothing in there that uh, gives me the option of that. There's additional CSS stuff like that. But well, no, I, there should be um, what I they refer to as your global or site settings. Um, yeah, but it's not using Elementor. No, no, but I mean, this is standard for themes, right? right. Any, every theme. Every theme has to have certain global settings, one of which is the color scheme, another one's the topography, and then things like, um, okay, just so pause. Look at con content layout. Uh, yeah, it could be that. Okay, content layout. I've been down down this road a million times and I can't find anything that changes the width of the post the pages are all nice but the post okay well it's absolutely going to be in the customizer and this is not something that anybody with a brain from a developer point of view would want see a custom css to control right this is part this is a, a basic theme setting so go back to uh, the main menu it's somewhere in here um how about blog options Because it's the blog. blog that's the bottom. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have a look at that. Yeah, you want something with the word layout in it. See, to me, that's just the, the, the main, the main uh, portion where it shows me if I go back to here. And it's, it's paid, it's posts this is what's, that we're concerned about, right? The width of posts. These are the posts, this is the post section where it shows. Right. And, and what we're trying to do is, is decrease the left and right margins. Where it shows me the number of columns. Number of columns, three. Number of columns, large mason. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But that's oh. not. Um, that's not the, the post. The that's not what post controls page. the width. I mean, normally the width is set, and then if you change the number of columns, it sticks the column numbers within the same width, right? It's so adding, true. like going from three columns to four columns does not make it wider. No, no, that's just for this, that's right. just for the category portion. Now, uh, I am used to seeing um, like a, a blog layout part of the customizer in which 
the width, number of columns, and so on are set. Um, but now let's just see what it, you had something here with margins in them. Columns of margin. Man, go scroll up a bit where. So, okay. So tiny. Uh, number of columns. Are you scrolled right up at the top? Yep. Okay, columns margin. Adjust the margin between columns. See, this is just for this section. This doesn't cover the post page. Right. So if you click on one of those posts. I'm sorry. So are we doing the are we concerned about the post layout the actual itself, post the, here, yeah. the template is layout, or are we talking same, about? It should, my, my desire is it, it, to have it the same width as the actual home page. Right. Well, there's got to um, be a setting page, somewhere. All my pages are wide. All my posts are condensed smaller. It's not a drastic problem that I can't live with, but I figured. No, no, but I mean, it's it's clearly something which is, you know, a normal, a sort of standard setting for um, the template. It, it, it almost, we're talking about the post template here, right? Yeah. And it's, 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 technically, it's a single post template. Yeah. You know, well, the biggest problem I'm having with this one is that normally I've, I've done other web uh, WordPress sites where I create my own child. And the problem being is this is a child of a parent theme, which means that I can't create a child of a child. You can't. You wouldn't that. need, or why would you want to? Because if I could, I could go into the CSS and I could change the width of this with CSS. Well, no, it's, oh, I mean, it's controlling it, right? One of, the, one of the reasons you use a child theme is so that you can have a style sheet that's of your CSS, own, yes, right, and so that's just called style dot CSS. Yes, I, right? so I, you've got I, know, a, I know what they are. I'm quite aware okay. So of uh, you, you've already things. got one now, haven't you? No, these you've are a child theme, so you must have a styles dot CSS file. Oh, no, this is a child theme of a parent theme. I couldn't have this theme with yeah, 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 but I mean, and then I got a secondary theme that runs off the parent. Okay, now you got me confused. Okay, I'm going to go right back to where we started. Right, here, here is the way the scheme's supposed to work. You have a key. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to show you what. Right. This this is the Pressbook making masonry blogs. Right. That's the one I'm running on. But so that's the run, child. Will not that's a child on, theme of the Pressbook, right? And it will not run on its own without Pressbook. So I can't right. create a child theme of that one. Right, because. It is because the, the because the theme you got has been implemented as a child theme. That's correct. Yeah. So wait a second. No, let me just think. I'm just wondering: is there some way for me to inject? Like, there's they, they, you can put additional CSS in, but I can't for life me figure out where to find. Well, that. I mean, one one thing: there's no reason why you couldn't. I mean, I, I think the the the. The, the solution is to find a setting that's provided by the theme expressly for the purpose that you want. Yeah, right? there is. That's somewhere in the customizer and there, the documentation for the theme should lead you to it. I've been Why don't you just. But, I've been walking now, wait a second, through let me, this let me for over a year finish. now. Let me finish. So you yeah. could, if you don't want to do that or you can't find it that way, then go to the child themes style.css file. And make I the change you that, want. And I have done that, and there's nothing in there that I can change. No, and no, I, but you're not changing change something. It. You're adding something. Yeah, but if I if I add it or change it, the theme, the 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 child theme has updates too, so it takes an update, and I lose what I had. Yeah, but it may only be like what two lines. Yeah, but is it going to overwrite all the stuff? That yeah, I but I mean, okay, so you got to go back and add two lines. Big deal. Well, there's got to be a way to. Just yeah, no, but the, unfortunately, it requires going into the documentation and finding the setting in question because I have no it's, doubt it's, that there it, is it, such a setting. It's, you know, it's, I can do that, I guess. Well, I mean, 
or just you know write to the send an email to the developer and say i can't find the bloody setting be, that i want because i want to change the you know the 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 width of the single post template to be the same as the front or home page all right and that should be a one sentence reply it's in x all right I mean, you wouldn't develop a theme without the ability to adjust the margins of templates as well as a default setting, which in the absence of a template having a setting, it will inherit the theme setting. That's right. Yeah. Which is often, you know, uh, well, in the current scheme of things, you get a full width setting and a content width setting. And, uh, and then you can set your own custom ones on top of them. And you get a drop down menu whenever you're working on a page or a post that says, you know, you want to switch it to full width or okay, leave it so, at content width. So maybe uh, before I fire off an email or, or uh, I got the first thing, thing I, I, I think you I can find in five or 10 minutes, but the answer uh, in the documentation, that's the way to do it. My second, my second thought is if I deactivate the, the, the press book masonry blog and then go into the press book blog and activate it and see if there is a setting for that in there that's a possibility change, yeah and change it in there and go back to the other one see if it inherits it from that one there is some technique for having a child theme in these circumstances that i'm not aware of but i know for example that the um um Outfits like Cadence, for example, or Astra um, encourage and make use themselves of, of child themes as a way to produce all kinds of variations on themes mm -hmm. quickly and easily, right? And in the Cadence documentation, it expressly mentions adding a child theme. And so how that would work when you already have a child theme i don't know but it does work i mean these guys know what they're doing for sure yeah it i i looked on the wordpress site and it's not it, you there's no way you can create a child of a child you can have a main theme and a child theme but after that you sit hmm. which i thought was weird but yeah you could also just try a google query that says you know, where is the setting for um, this particular theme to adjust the, you know, global content width? Yep. And see what comes back. Everything's because if, if, in fact, there's some issue about finding that setting, because it isn't obvious, then everybody using this theme at some point or other will come up with this question. It's such a basic question yeah and nobody nobody wants people hate working with something like the winds that we're talking about here that, that can't be adjusted but should be able to be adjusted it just drives us crazy right oh yeah <laughs> well it's so frustrating because it's sort of like somebody sells you a car and it turns out it only runs on three wheels and it's like hey didn't somebody tell this car maker that it takes a fourth wheel well, that's yeah. what the theme developer here seems to think that, oh, no, no one will ever want to change the width of their content. My wife would just say we got an extra wheel. <laughs> <laughs> or lock, missed a wheel somehow <laughs> when, when God was giving out wheels. Okay, right, guys, guys, I, can, I can do all of that. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate all the feedback and help you guys have been giving me. I do. I, um, I guess that's about all I can do with this one. It's good enough, but I really do appreciate the help. And uh, this is uh, held once a week or once a month or once a month. Actually, I may increase the frequency. Uh. <laughs> I'd like to come back just to just to watch and listen. Well, it's interesting because I, I just the other day I ran into a problem with autosave. And then I realized when I thought about it that I really didn't quite understand well enough what how revisions work. So I took a quick dive and about two hours later came back up for air and I thought, yeah, this is not at all what I thought it is <laughs> and how it works. Um, turn on off autosave. That's a real bummer. I mean, an irritant. And um, does that really mean that in some of the sites, 
that I'm involved with that there must be thousands of revisions in the database that are of absolutely no value to anybody. But it's like, yeah. hey, let's put a couple thousand pounds of lead in the trunk of your car. I know. See how it performs, <laughs> right? Gee, you know, the gas mileage is really dropped through the floor. We're getting like one mile to the gallon. I wonder what the problem is. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, well, that's what is, you know, anyway. I call them all seniors moments. <laughs> we got to be careful. Well, I give, these days. I give lessons in them. Somebody was saying that uh, uh, I can, 70 or 80 is the new 60. <laughs> I, I got to wonder. I can give you a nice senior moment. I went out there and I put some windshield wiper fluid in my wife's car. I went to the side. I opened up the trunk. I heard it pop. Go to the front of the car. Well, the hood ain't moving. My son comes out and I said, lift up that knob to get that hood open. He opens up the thing and I still can't get the hood open. And my wife comes walking out the front door, walks over, goes into the driver's thing, boom, the hood opens. I said, what did you do? <coughs> you guys were opening up the trunk. <laughs> they had the little buttons on the side. We were working with the trunk, and here, he, here she walks over, and she opens up the hood after all. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Gotta go, guys. Nice. All right. Okay. Thanks very much for the help. Take care, all. Bye-bye.